All right, hey everybody, Pop Can Dan, man. 2021 is in the books. It is closed. We are done. We are done, man. Now we're into uh, winter, January 2022. So <laughs> tell me, how was your 2021? Um, put mine in a nutshell. Eh, okay, let me put it this way. Started out strong. Then went... <clears throat> I'll explain that. Um, you th see through all my videos, I kind of drop little hints and things that have happened and kind of give detail. But now I can actually sit back and just talk about it. You know, uh, the year started out strong. I started out one of my, the ground was still frozen. And I got one of my bucket listers, man. I got my, uh, do I have it here? Oh, I think I do. No, that's not it. No, I don't have it with me. Sorry. Um, my 1857 uh, uh, Dragon Slayer one penny token. Uh, 27 years, man. I've been looking for that coin. I finally got it. And I got it this spring, too. I wasn't expecting that, too. It was just bizarre. Um, I guess after 27 years, you're just not expecting it at all. So uh, I got that, and I was super stoked. Uh, the Bradford Beeper was with me for that one, and uh, yeah, he. I, I whenever I find if I find a coin, I know he loves the coin, so I let the Bradford Beeper. You know, I give him first crack at looking at it before I do, and I'm I hand it over to him. I'm expecting, you know, maybe a token, maybe like an earlier token. Uh, I knew it wasn't a large cent; it was too too uh, too thick for that. But I handed it over and I wasn't even expecting him. He starts cleaning up and he, he says to me, he goes, your, your drought is over. And when he said that, man, my body, the chills went through my body. I'm like, what is that? Tell me what it is. And then when he said it's a dragon slayer, one penny token. I just, I was over the moon, man. I started off the year strong and the coppers were coming, man. They were popping. They were popping, man. Uh, it seemed like everywhere I was going, I was getting a copper. And then I went camping. I went camping for 16 days, which I do every summer. And that's where things started to go. <laughs> so I brought my, uh, my Mine Lab Equinox 800 camping. And whenever I go camping, I, all I do is water detect when I go camping. <clears throat> and I usually bring my AT Pro. And it's been good, very good to me. But I said, I felt uh, this year, I said, I'm going to bring the uh, the 800 and see how that works in the water. I'd never been in the water with it. I got the headphones. I was so excited. <clears throat> I went out the first time in the water. I found a few things. It was pretty cool. I guess I was out for about two hours, whatever. I went back in the water the next day. I literally just had submerged my, my control box. I started hearing this funny noise in my headphones. I'm like, what is that? And I lifted it up. And all I saw across the screen was like ERR, like error or something. I'm like, what? So I turn it off. I turn it back on. And it just wasn't clicking. There was something wrong. And then I look closely at the control box. And I could see water mark through the control box, like water. And I'm like, oh, are you kidding me, man? I was so mad. That was the only detector I brought. And I was there 16 days. And I, I had a... I think I was on my third day or something or fourth day by the time I got in the water. And I was lucky because my daughter was coming up. I told her, go in my go in my my closet in the garage and grab my AT Pro. And she didn't. She brought it up. Um, I had to send the AT Pro. I had, sorry. I had to send the 800 control box back to Mind Lab. Uh, and I will say this about Mind Lab, all right? I've heard many, many stories about their customer service. But I'll tell you this. They were, they knocked it out of the park with me, man. I called, I called and they gave me the number in Pennsylvania. I called Pennsylvania. They said, give me the number on the back. They sent a, they sent a form to uh, my store in Toronto where I had purchased it. Uh, they sent me the form. I, I filled it out. I brought it in literally within three days. I had a brand new control box in my mailbox. So, hey, Mind Lab, mm, I'm going to give props to uh radio world as well in toronto because it was radio world and mind lab they were the ones who did that for me and got it back so fast i appreciate that so <clears throat> i'm back in action right 
I should be on the climb back up. No. You know what happened, man? So I started putting all my settings back into the control box. And I'm going to tell you this. <clears throat> I'm a turn on and go guy, all right? I'm, I'm not a big techie guy. I don't know a lot about detectors. I'm not going to lie, man. I don't know a lot about the settings. I really don't. And I should. And I'm probably going to take time this winter, go over it and learn it properly. Because when I was doing the settings, I put the threshold on like 12, whatever it was. <clears throat> a couple of the settings I put, I always sent sensitivity, I max it out. Uh, so I got, I got my settings that I like. But what happened was when I was doing the settings, I don't know what I was thinking I was on, but I was actually notching out some of the numbers on my field two screen. And I went from the end of August until mid-December before... And it's funny how I found this out. I didn't even realize they were notched out. It was pretty much like 18 to 25, 26 was notched out. I'm like, we're talking about all the coppers. And I was in a copper drought. Couldn't find nothing, man. I was finding high 20s, but, you know, buttons at 15. But I was not finding that copper range, man. And I was in the field. And I, I went to do a live dig because I had a beautiful signal, man. It was high 20s, too. And so I got the camera and I'm, I'm swinging the detector and it's funny when I played the video or I put out the YouTube video, uh, Eric from Relic Dirty Hands was the one who uh, sent me a message right away and he said, Dan, great hunt. He said, but I got to tell you something. He said, are you aware that you're, you've notched out on your screen a bunch of numbers that are really important? And I'm like... What are you talking about, Willis? <laughs> and he said, go look. And I went and turned on, I went and turned it on, and lo and behold, these, these things have been notched out since I got the new control box. I did it by accident. I never noticed. You want to talk about a rookie mistake? All right. I'm going to talk about many things in the video, but I want to talk about that right away. Rookie mistake. How well do you know your machine? Well, I'll tell you this. I'm going to be doing a lot of studying over the winter, all right? And when I come out in the spring, I'm going to make sure I know my machine, for goodness sakes. That was just so embarrassing. But thank you, Eric, Relic Dirty Hands, and Lori from Relic Dirty Hands. They were the ones that spotted it, and they sent me a message, and I got it corrected. But mind you, I only had like a week left, and the ground was almost frozen, so I didn't get out very much. Uh, I just felt so robbed, and there was nobody to blame but me uh, on that one. So... Folks, if I if I can give a takeaway to anybody here, uh, learn your your learn your machine, man. All right, I I uh, I took it for granted, and I uh, like I said, I'm a turn on and go guy, and I thought I knew enough about machine, but I, my machine, but I didn't, and I wound up paying the price for it. I lost valuable time, man. I lost September, October, November, prime detecting months. I lost because of this. So that's all I can say, folks, is learn your detectors. You know, um, don't be like this guy here. <laughs> anyway, hey, listen, winter videos, uh, I call it Beyond the Headphones. I got a lot of stuff I'm going to talk about. Uh, good stuff, bad stuff, controversial stuff, funny stuff. Uh, I want to talk to a few people that I went detecting with uh, who had monumental years, man. Like this year was insane uh, i'm gonna pose questions to all kinds of other detectors out there around the world um i it's hard you know with with covid and everything to to get in person to interview people so i'm just gonna be trying to get some video clips of their answers as well if not maybe i'll just read their answers that they sent me by messenger hey that's it man that's what we're gonna be doing i hope you enjoy it let's see what else comes up next all right
All right, friends, I promised I wasn't going to make these long videos like last year. Last year, they were 30 minutes each. And I'm like, who wants to watch 30 minutes worth of me? Oh, man, my wife, I give my wife a headache. Imagine she's been married to me for 23 years. So <laughs> I don't expect you guys to listen to me for 30 minutes. So I, I want to try to ground it down to maybe 10, 15. I know my intro was about nine minutes right there. But one thing I just wanted to talk about, uh, <clears throat> let's call it a highlight of my year. And I'm going to say it was um, really neat, but it was not really neat at the same time. Uh, and you're going to say, what does that mean? So the best way to explain this is I got a phone call from a, a fellow detectorist. I, I, want, I like to call him a friend of mine, uh, Chris Delat. Um, <clears throat> and he said, I, I have a proposition for you. And I said, yeah, what's up? You know, I said, uh, <clears throat> You know, what do you, what's going on? And he said, I got a phone call from a retired police officer who works on uh, cold cases. And he said, and they are working currently on a cold case. And uh, it, was, um, <clears throat> it was about an hour and a bit away from me. And uh, it's a girl disappeared in 1967, a 10-year-old girl. And they think they have a, a lead on where she is. And they they had contacted Chris and asked him if uh, he could put together a team of people to go uh, metal detect this uh, forest. And uh, just uh, what we're strictly we're going to do is <clears throat> detect and you get a good signal or any signal really. And they gave us a big pile of flags and you slap the flag in the ground. <clears throat> we don't dig it. Uh, the forensics team comes around and digs up all the flags. Um <clears throat> So we went, uh, it was, uh, it was, uh, Crystal at his father, Albert, uh, a wonderful man, by the way, as well. Uh, father, son team. And you want to talk about two of the nicest people in the hobby, Chris and Albert Delat. All right. I'll say that right now. Get it off my chest. These two guys are mint. All right. Um, check them out on Facebook. Uh, Niagara Relic Hunter is a uh, Crystal Lat's page, uh, on YouTube. Check him out, man. This guy is just such a great, great human being. Uh, and of course, uh, we invited out the Bradford Beeper as well. <clears throat> so, you know, we showed up there and it was, uh, and, and by the way, I'm not, I, I never, I never talked about this during the year. I never put it in any videos. I never showed any photos. I, I, because the, the bottom line is it's, uh, it, it was not for my glory. I was not trying to profit or, or be, uh, glorified off of the, off of, uh, somebody else's misfortune that's not was not my intention by any means so um we went out there and um <clears throat> we met up and it was it's funny because that was the first time i ever met uh chris and his dad and i we kept saying over the phone you know i'd love to meet on uh better conditions than you know uh than what we were gonna meet for the first time you know tr essentially trying to look for a, a missing girl's body <clears throat> um but we met nice guys, you know, we went, we went to the location and, uh, we spent probably, I'd say about two and a half hours detecting this, this a small area of cedar forest and we, we detected it, um, got a ton of hits in there. Holy mackerel. I don't know <clears throat> how many were, uh, were, you know, bottle caps or whatever, but there was a ton of hits. And so we uh <clears throat> when we were done uh the uh, the investigator the the retired police officer said hey why don't you guys stick around to see something that's going to be really uh it's it, life changing he said we're bringing the cadaver dog and the cadaver dog is going to run around the field here around run around the forest and uh so we did and while, while we were detecting i had my reservations uh there was one spot kept making me feel sick to my stomach it was along a rock wall and uh, <clears throat> I, I, I actually had approached the investigator and I said, listen, I said, I'm not an investigator. I said, I'm just a detectorist. I said, but every time I walk over to that area over there, I feel sick to my stomach. I really do. Um, I said, I, just the way the ground looks, the way there, there, there's like rocks have been knocked off the wall and it was kind of made a semicircle on the ground formation and it looks like I don't know it just didn't sit right with me it looked like something had been tampered there and and you just get a sense see the spidey sense start going and I I um 
So he said, interesting. He said, okay, well, he said, let's, let's see when the cadaver dog shows up and what happens. And when the cadaver dog showed up and they let it go and this dog was like a high on crack speed. It was running around crazy, back and forth, back and forth, going all over the place, up on the wall, rock wall, down, all through, everywhere. It was not, it was like, it was crazy. Like the thing, I thought it was like the batteries were malfunctioning on this dog or something. <clears throat> all of a sudden it ran by where I had talked about along the rock wall and it ran full speed and it stopped and, and it sat down right where I said so I'm not I, I was a little bit when he when the dog sat down I, I felt this feeling of maybe there could be closure coming but at the same time I felt really sick to my stomach like why did I feel that way about that spot and the cadaver dog sat down there I just something didn't sit right with me uh so anyways I looked over at the investigator and the investigator looked at me, the retired police officer, and he never said a word. He just gave me a nod from across the forest. He just nodded to me like that. And I guess it was about 10 minutes later when I was able to go around and talk to him. <clears throat> he said, I didn't want to say anything to you when you were, um, when you asked me about that. He said, but I had a cadaver dog out here last week and the cadaver dog sat exactly where you were, where you asked me about and that was really <clears throat> it was bizarre it was like it was like bittersweet but made me feel sick um <clears throat> it was it was really emotional man like i really i got really choked up um cuz i you know I, I was hoping you know some of the family members were there you know and I, they're in their 60s 65 whatever now and their family my like brother the brother was there and it was just <clears throat> you know it was really emotional man and um so the forensics team came in and they were starting to dig there. And I guess at the end of the day, pardon upon the end of the day, uh, the, re the, the results they got was, <clears throat> I, I believe they had found, they got some DNA from there. And I think they had found a bone fragment from a finger. But that was it. Um, <clears throat> which the, the, uh, the retired police officer believes that either the body was um, moved uh, by the... Uh, <clears throat> the killer or uh, animals had got to the body and, and dragged it away over time or something like that. And um, so, yeah, we don't know. Uh, I, that was the last I'd ever heard. I, I guess I, I'm not, I don't really, it's not my job to find out results and stuff. Uh, I guess it's the, our job to go in and just detect. And that's what they ask us to do. Detect, get the hits, put the flags in, and we've done our job. Um, but I can tell you this, we walked away from there feeling proud about what we did, uh, at least our part, uh, in what we were doing. And, and I can tell you this folks, if you ever, ever, here's how I'm going to close this off. <clears throat> if you ever, ever get the chance to be a part of something like that, do it. Don't say, oh, that's morbid. I, I can't do that. It's for the right reasons. Trust me. <clears throat> and even today, like this, we did this, I think it was in the early September. And even today, I feel so proud about taking part in that. And at the end of the day, like I said, I didn't use names. I don't use locations, um, you know, because it's not my, it's not my to glorify me by any means. Um, it was done for the right reasons. And like I said, you guys, you should definitely, uh, if you ever get the chance, if you ever approach by anybody to do something like that, do it. Uh, you will feel good about yourself. All right. It's a, it's the right thing to do. Um, <clears throat> and the last thing I'll tell you quick, the brother of the missing girl, <clears throat> I guess he's like 60, 61, whatever he was. He came up to me and he said, he introduced himself and <clears throat> he said, where do you live? You know, and I, I told him where I lived and he said, <clears throat> that's an hour hour and 15 minutes away from here I said yeah <clears throat> he said hey, do you know me I said no I don't know you I've never met you before he said that's exactly what I want to talk to you about he said you don't know me you've never met me he said you live an hour and 15 minutes away you took a day off of work he goes to come out here and do this for me he goes and you've never met me you don't even know me and I told him I said because it's the right thing to do 
Morally, it was the right thing to do. And I would do it again tomorrow in a heartbeat. And he shook my hand and he said, thank you so much. Folks, that's all I can say. You need, if you ever get the chance to do that, all right? Help out in a cold case, man. It will make you feel so much better. Feel like you've you've done something good in the world, man. All right? Uh, that's how I'm going to end it. Pop Can Dan signing off. Folks, um, I'm not sure what the next video is going to bring, but it'll be some fun stuff anyways, all right? I know this was a little somber, but I wanted to get this off my chest um, because it was definitely for me, like I said, the highlight of my uh, detecting year for sure. Um, even though it sounded really morbid, it really was. And it, it meant a lot to me uh, and it was the right thing to do. We're out of here, folks. <laughs>